Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the installation of Nest Protects throughout my home. Now, Nest Protect is Google's smart home smoke detector that makes using and operating smoke detectors a better experience. If you've ever had your smoke detector go off in the middle of the night or you've tried to figure out which smoke detector was the one to go off so that you could fix just that one, you know how painful it can be to work with smoke detectors in general. Now, Nest wanted to fix these frustrations, and so they created the Protect, which is an elegant solution complete with technology that allows you to silence the smoke detector when needed, and other options such as a voice which gives you instructions and alerts, and automatic monitoring of the battery level in each of your Protects. So they've really thought through all of the things that have caused the most pain for users of smoke detectors in the past. Now, the Nest Protect can be purchased either as a battery-only or a wired smoke detector system. Uh, in my case, my home is wired, so I went with the wired version. But if you've got uh, no wires in your house and yours is just a battery-operated situation, you can get uh, a Nest Protect as well. You just want to make sure it's the one that has the uh, battery on it, not the battery and the wired connection. Now the package comes with the needed batteries uh, that are needed for the backup in case of a power outage, so you will use batteries whether it's wired or not wired. And Nest recommends the Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries, which you can purchase at your local store or from Amazon. Once you pull the Nest Protects from the box, you will need to fire up the Nest app on your phone to get started with the installation process. You then want to tap on Settings and then select the Nest Protect as the item that you want to add. From there, you will use the camera on your phone to scan the QR code on the back of the first Nest Protect that you want to install. You are then given instructions on what is needed to make the installation, including your Wi-Fi password, a ladder if needed, and a screwdriver. Next, you select the room this particular Nest Protect will be located in, and then you start the installation process by removing the battery tab on the physical Nest device itself. Once this is done, the Nest Protect wakes up and starts its setup process. Hi, from Nest. Hola, saludos de Nest. Press okay. the button now for English. Press to test. This is only a test. The alarm will sound. The alarm is loud. The test starts in 10 seconds. Press to cancel. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This is only a test. Testing smoke. Testing carbon monoxide. The test is finished. Everything looks good. Now once it has gone through its initial setup, you go back to the Nest app and tap Next. Now Nest moves on to connect to your wireless network and walks through the steps to getting your Nest Protect connected to Wi-Fi. Once it's established a connection, it asks if you want to use the path light that is built into the Protect. This is a great feature that will turn on when it senses motion at night to give you just enough light so that you can see where you're walking. If lights like these bother you or you're in a place where light will come on too frequently for you to sleep, you can turn the light off or even choose to keep the light on all the time if you want. Uh, in my case, I like to use the motion sensor to activate it, so I'll leave it alone and tap next. Now the setup finishes up and lets me know that it's complete. I now have the option of adding additional Nest Protects until I have all the Protects I am adding to my home set up throughout the Nest app. Once I've finished setting up each of my Protects, I tap on Next. At this point, I have the option to turn off Sound Check. Now, Sound Check is a feature that allows the Nest to check its sensors, power, and Wi-Fi connection, along with its own voice and alarm. I can choose a preferred time to do the test so it doesn't happen when I don't want it to, or I can turn it off completely. In my case, I'm going to leave it at its default and tap Next. Now once all of the devices are configured, I start the process of installing the devices on my walls and or ceiling. It is recommended that I do a safety check once I've installed all of my Nest Protects, and I will get a similar test pattern that I got when I first set up the Nest. You can run this anytime by pushing the center button twice. 
Once I've installed the devices and done all of my tests, I can tap on Done and complete my Nest Protect installation. And as you can see, I've got all of my protects listed there right inside the Nest application. Now once the Nest Protects are set up, you can see I've got the different rooms here. If I just tap into one of them, you'll see it gives me some status information there. You can see that the sensors and alarm, the timing, all of those things were last checked. If I just scroll through them, you can see I can see every one of my particular Nest Protects here and when they were tested and whether they checked out okay. So it gives me a nice way to test these things out. If I just tap on done, you can see it's telling me right now with the green ring that everything is okay. And you can see all the different areas there, it's telling me it's okay. So the green ring is what I wanna see there. Uh, if I see uh, yellow, it indicates there's uh, something that needs to be addressed. If it's red, there's an emergency. And then at night, it gives kind of that white ring glow around it to uh, show me that it's just a nightlight. So that's how I would look at that. I can tap in here to see history, and I can check the history of any one of these uh, different alarms, and you can see that they've been okay for all these days here. If I just want to tap through them, I can tap through the various uh, smoke detectors there. Let's go ahead and just tap all the way back here and all the way back. I can also tap on checkup, and so if I wanted to, I could do the safety checkup at any time. Now there are also a number of settings that I can look at if I tap on settings. You'll see I can look at sound check again and make any changes I want there. Let's tap back. I can silence my alarms from here. And so this just gives me the option to be able to silence my alarms from the Nest app. If I turn that off, then they can't be silenced. I can look at what works with Nest Protect. And let's come back out of here. I've got information as well as to what to do when a smoke and fire happens or if I've got a carbon monoxide warning. So they do give you some information on that. I just tap out of that. And then I can go into the individual protects. And if I just tap downstairs, for instance, I can turn path light on, nightly promise, which is where it checks for me. It'll show me a green ring if everything's okay or a yellow one if something needs to be looked at. Uh, I've got a stream check I can turn on or off and the heads up on or off. And you can see here I can adjust brightness, the language, the Wi-Fi connection, where it's located, and I've also got some technical information. So there are some things inside the Nest app that I can do to adjust the settings for these devices. Just tap back and tap back here, and we'll go back home. Now another thing is, is if I just come up to the very top here and I just tap on Messages, uh, you'll see in here different messages about my devices. And you can see when the sound checks were complete here, you can see that there was uh, power outages here and it's showing that my devices aren't connected so I need to take a look at them. You can see here smoke is clearing. I had some smoke in the master bedroom at one point. Uh, that happened to be a blow dryer of my wife's. If I just keep coming down here you can see the different power outages I have. If I scroll all the way down here you can see where it says replace batteries now because I needed to have a battery replaced. You can see where it said low backup battery. So it is nice that it checks that for you and allows you to see what batteries need to be replaced when. And so this just gives you a nice history of different things that happen with your devices in the messages area here. Now one more thing I wanted to show you is that the Nest Protects do interface with the Nest plugin for HomeBridge. So they do show up as HomeKit devices in the Apple Home app and you can see I've got them right here in the master bedroom. I've got one sensor for smoke and one sensor for carbon monoxide. If I just hard press into these, you can see if I tap on details, here's all the information for the master bedroom Nest Protect for smoke. You can see if it shows whether smoke's detected or not. Uh, so one of the things that I can do with these is if smoke is detected, then I can set certain automations in place that would work with some of my other HomeKit devices. So again, nice thing is they do show up there. They are a little bit limited in what I can do with them. I really wish the motion sensors were available, but they're not just the smoke detection or the carbon monoxide detection. So that's my installation and setup of my Nest Protects. As you can see, they are a great addition to your smart home, especially if you've had issues with your smoke detectors in the past. Since I do have vaulted ceilings that require ladders to access the smoke detectors, I can say that the Nest Protects are a huge improvement for me and I've had no issues since purchasing them. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.